All right, Commissioner, we're live. Thank you, Shannon. Um, good morning, everybody, and, and happy new year. Uh, we're going to uh, talk today about the vaccine, uh, where we're at a little bit in the state, but more specifically, where we're at in Lucas County and what we can all expect. This, uh, this press conference, uh, I, I do think we're going to start doing a, a weekly update. Uh, and, you know, again, I think it's important to make sure that the community understands exactly where we're at with our vaccines. So we're going to try to tell you how many we actually get uh, every uh, that week, uh, where we're going to be vaccinating, who's going to be vaccinated, uh, because again, there's a lot of confusion too, and 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 rightly so, uh, of maybe the tier groups, where you fit in, how you're going to be notified. So we're going to do a thirty thousand foot view today, and try to then in coming weeks uh, drill down into uh, some details that are, are probably going to be um, what you're going to want to hear about. So uh, I, we do have a, a short PowerPoint that we'll work off of today. And, and again, please use any of the graphics for whatever you need. I do believe that you will be able to find this on Facebook and YouTube so uh, the community can refer back to it. And uh, we'll do that probably every week from now on uh, until we really don't need to have updates on vaccinations. So let's do this. Uh, Shannon, would you mind starting the PowerPoint presentation, please? Thank you, Shannon. Um, so let's let's talk a little bit about uh, you know how how does the vaccine get to us, uh, and I think that's the, that's first the, the most important thing. Uh, we can talk about some other details later about Pfizer and Moderna and how the, it's been actually developed uh, to get you a little bit more comfortable to understand really what it is and and how it was made and how and how you know it might affect you and or the community as we push out the vaccine. But really, you know, both Pfizer and Moderna have produced the vaccine it does get shipped to us. And, and again, um, just a, a little bit of an overview graphic here for, for everybody to look at. Uh, it gives us, you know, McKetchen is the distributor for um, the Moderna vaccine. Uh, it gets to us um, and each uh, the vaccine is a little bit different in the way we have to store it. And I think that's important uh, because again, it does it does dictate again, how we, how we set up vaccination clinics and uh, pre-register people. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Uh, Pfizer is the one that you heard about that really is super cold uh, and you have to have a very special refrigerator, excuse me, special freezer for that. Uh, and we don't have that, but we do, public health does not have that here locally, but we do have uh, a couple of hospitals that do have the ability to store that. So that vaccine has mainly went to those hospitals and our pharmacies. The Moderna vaccine is the one that we've been getting right now and it's easier to store. It's, it's really a, a typical freezer. Uh, and then we can put that in the refrigerator. And that's the vaccine that we've been giving out now since a little bit before Christmas. So I think what that does, it, it, it all adds up to uh, who's getting it. Because again, once we get it, once the hospital gets it, once the pharmacy gets it, then you know we have to get those vaccines into arms. And how do we get those in arms? Well, really, and who does it? Um, and who dictates who actually gets it? Who dictates it is the state. Uh, and through the federal government. So when, uh, when we start talking about groups, really those are dictated from Columbus to all the health departments, to pharmacies, to hospitals on who gets it. Uh, so who's receiving it right now? Uh, of course, local health department, our department has received uh, doses. Hospitals are receiving doses. Long-term care facilities, and, and again, I wanna make sure that we understand this, Long-term care facilities are getting vaccinated, but those are being done by, uh, by pharmacies, uh, CVS, Walgreens specifically. Uh, they've been tasked through that through the federal government to do that. But we're all getting doses. Again, it, the, the individuals who are getting vaccinated in let's say tier one we're at right now have been dictated uh, by, uh, by Columbus to each of us and to each of our uh, respective agencies and organizations, and we move that forward. So distribution. Uh, Shannon, next slide. So how does this all work? And really, you know, where are we at right now? Well, let's look at this in phases. Uh, so we have four phases, essentially. Let's talk about phase one right now. Again, we have limited supply. We really do. Uh, I think right now we have enough vaccine in the state to vaccinate anybody who wants to be vaccinated at about a 5% uh, of the population. So it's very, very small at this point, maybe five or six. So we don't have a lot of supply in, in, in the state or in the country right now. So we're very specific uh, on who we're going to vaccinate. So phase one, 
um, is limited supply. We go to phase two, the, the spigot on the faucet opens up a little bit. And so we're gonna be getting more vaccine. So additional groups can be vaccinated, but not all Ohioans. So again, we're, we're trying to make sure that we're, we're diligent with our supply that we get in, that we're very focused on who's getting it. Uh, but what happens then is that spigot opens up further to phase three and four, let's just combine those two. And really that is anybody who wants one, come get it. Uh, that's, that's probably the easiest thing because you have vaccine uh, enough to do everybody and then some. And so that's, that's really easy. The hard part right now is when we get to phase two, but even harder is phase one because we do have limited supplies. So phase one, we're looking at tier one, Shannon. So phase one, tier one, what does that look like? Phase one A. So those individuals right now who we are vaccinated, whether it is the public health, hospitals, or the pharmacies, are healthcare workers and personnel who are routinely involved in the care of COVID-19 patients. Makes sense. So doctors, nurses, uh, but even you know the staff members at those hospitals who are working close proximity, who are you know cleaning rooms and things of that nature, those individuals. Uh, are in direct, really direct contact with those COVID patients. So that makes sense. Residents and staffing and nursing homes. We talked about that again. Pharmacies are taking care of them right now. Residents and staff at assisted living facilities. Patients and staff at state psychiatric hospitals. People with intellectual disabilities and those with mental illness who live in group homes or centers and staff at those locations. Residents and staff at um, our Ohio Veterans Homes. And of course, EMS responders right now uh, those are, you know, those firefighters, paramedics, those individuals who are going to, uh, again, be in direct contact with, uh, with those patients on scene, transporting them. So that is phase 1A. So those individuals uh, who are in this group, we, we're looking at who we're responsible for public health are about 10,000 individuals at this point in time. So uh, again, this is phase one. This is what we're working on right now. Uh, and we're, we're anticipating um, to, to continue doing this for the next couple weeks, uh, I, but it all is dictated by the amount of vaccine we get in. Shannon? Amounts of vaccine. Everybody's kind of asking about this too. Well, how much vaccine is coming in? Well, what's, what's the population of Ohio? About uh, 11 million, a little bit more than that. Uh, population of Lucas County is about 425, 28,000. Uh, our first our first shipment was 2,700 doses, uh, so really a drop in the bucket. Uh, that came right before Christmas. Uh, right after Christmas, we got 800 doses, and then we're, we were scheduled to receive 100, 700 doses, which we received yesterday. So this is our allotment of vaccine at this point in time for public health. We're, we'll get into hospitals and pharmacies uh, uh, at another time. Uh, with the, the number of doses, but I think it's important for you to realize this is what we're responsible for a, as the health department. And remember, we're, we're looking at needing about 10,000 doses to be able to do that tier 1A that we're responsible for. So how much have we distributed? Well, you, you kind of see before the holiday, not many. Uh, again, we were trying to get our feet wet, understand how to actually work work the process uh, in limited fashion. fashion. Uh, we did um, first responders through uh, Mercy, uh, Mercy Hospital, uh, through a partnership with them. Uh, we've done first responders of 230 and 320. You see those on those two days. And then we ran a clinic of about 150. Again, trying to get our feet wet, making sure that we understand um, all the ins and outs of what we, what we needed to do with the resources and just the process itself. So again, that was uh, during the holiday period. Next slide. So what do we got planned? Um, and uh, again, our, our, initial, um, our initial desire is if we get vaccine in within seven days, it's out of our shelves. And, and that, that, that is, uh, that's, not very, um, that's not very aggressive. So eventually what I like to see us do is within 24, 48 hours, we can um, get doses in, get doses out. Uh, again, that's very aggressive. But I, again, I think it's important to, to make sure that those doses that we have get out into the public as fast as we can with the understanding that there's always going to be some sort of variable there that, again, we may have to overcome to be able to get that, uh, that clinic operational or you know, that vaccine out. Again, a snowstorm could hamper us. So uh, again, this is forecasted for, uh, for this week. And um, I will tell you, as of last night, I think 
we were booked, booked better than 95% of all these vaccinations are, are spoken for. So by the end of this week, uh, for this week, we should have about 2,200 vaccinations in arms. Uh, again, drop in the bucket relative to what we need. Uh, but again, it's, I think it's a, it's a good start for us um, in this community. Uh, we, uh, we're, we're above average uh, uh, for the state average of, of, being, of vaccinating our individuals, but still that's, that's, not, that's not good enough. We, we really want vaccine in this community and that's really our, uh, our, our block, our barrier is just the vaccine. I just talked to uh, staff today uh, at the 700, uh, the 700 vaccination clinic. And, um, you know, again, it's, it's good that we're doing 700, but we could easily double that in that, in, in, at that clinic today, uh, just with the process that we're using. So we know as we get more vaccine in, uh, thousands of doses at a time, uh, we can, we can get them out pretty quick. Next slide, Janet. So where do we go? So again, you know, you know that we have 10,000 individuals or so that we need to get vaccinated in that tier, that tier 1A group. But we understand that the governor has talked about this, about phase 1B or, or the next tier. And we're really looking at Ohioans age 65 and older, uh, those living with severe uh, congenital developmental or early onset medical disorders. And that goal, which I, is, is great, and I, I hope we can do this, uh, adults who work in, in our schools, K through 12, uh, only at this point in time, K through 12. Uh, and uh, yesterday uh, had a conversation, uh, which we do every week or every other week with all of our schools, uh, talking about many things, but talking about the vaccinations uh, that are coming down um, here soon for, for their staff. And, and many of them have already started uh, canvassing their staff to see who would want to go ahead and get the actual vaccination. So again, that's great for us for pre-planning. Pre but uh, again, the schools are being very proactive again with, um, with COVID and the vaccination process that we have at hand right now. More to come on this 1B, I, I still think it's being worked on down at Columbus uh, and, and it's not all the way fleshed out. And as we know from COVID and how we're responding to COVID and things that we have to do, it does change. So bear with all of us as we get information, but we wanna be transparent and make sure that you have everything you can at your fingertips to make sure you know when you could be vaccinated or where the vaccinations are. Next slide. How do we do that? Well, we are going to ask you to register uh, right before you get your, your vaccination. But what we wanna to do too is, is see who's interested and where they're at who want, who want to get uh, vaccinated for, for COVID-19. Uh, this is a screenshot of um, our opening page for our pre-vaccination form survey that is on our website. So if you go to our website, you can click on that. It'll take you here. Um, Shannon, are we gonna to try to get to the website? Thank you. So uh, what I want to try to show you here is just kind of walk you through what it looks like so that um, when you do get on it, you're not surprised. But we're going to be asking you a couple of the different things. Of course, your name, uh, you know, uh, some demographics. Can we scroll down a little bit, Shannon? Thank you so much. Where you live, uh, county of residence, that's going to be important for us. Uh, this, this is important, your email address. Um, please give us your email address. We're, we're eventually probably going to get a, a, text, um, uh, a, a text box in here too, so we can text you information. But for right now, we really do wanna email your information. And what we're planning on doing is every week, whoever signs up for this, we'll get a, a, little, of a, a little bit of a newsletter to talk about you know, the vaccine, maybe some current information about the vaccine, uh, but where we're at with the process and where you might be in that vaccination tier or process or date. Uh, we ask you to kind of for your employment sector, that's going to help us out. You know, I retired, unemployed. Uh, do, you, do you work for a pharmacy? Who, who, who are you? Uh, so we can kind of get an idea then too of where you might end up um, for your dose that is going to be spoken for some. Uh, as, we, as we scroll down, this is going to be important to here too, because again, we know um, that the governor is looking at uh, getting that, that, that 1B uh, moving, which includes 65 and older, uh, those with some conditions. And um, uh, again, you, you kind of see uh, some of those conditions that we're talking about, those medical conditions, which would uh, put you into that, that 1B category. Um, Again, uh, this is going to be live today. So we can start actually populating this. So if you're interested in getting the COVID vaccination, 
please, please, please uh, go to the go to our website and start this pre-registration process. It doesn't mean that you're going to get your vaccine. What it means is you're going to be, you're going to, we're going to know you want the vaccine so that we can start positioning ourselves to make sure that, again, we get you your vaccine when that tier group is opened up for us. Uh, and then also too, if, if, we, if anybody has missed their vaccination, this will help us to uh, kind of understand where we're at in that process. Uh, I think the, the main thing is um, as we go down the next weeks to months, uh, when we start looking at um, information, uh, please uh, do as much research as you can on your own because I think that's really important. Uh, knowledge is power. Uh, but make sure it's from a reputable source. Uh, us, as the health department, uh, we're going to be branding um, like the registration form, but we're going to be branding everything uh, to make sure that you know that it's coming from us. Uh, we're going to be talking about other groups that we're partnering with that also will have our information. Uh, so uh, again, please uh, make sure that you uh, you go to the right sources and, and that you know they're they're trustworthy and that they're they're going to give you as much information as possible. Uh, I will tell you uh, the vaccination itself, uh, just a couple things. And then I think we'll open up for questions for today and then we'll get into some, some deeper subjects over the coming weeks. Uh, we're, you know, we're, we're tasked too with making sure that when people do receive the vaccine that there's not um, any reactions to them or severe reactions. And at this point in time, we, we've really had uh, no, uh, no reactions that are out of the ordinary. Uh, and that's a good thing. We had one individual that reacted um, to the vaccination. Uh, again, we, we know about we know about some of these reactions, and um, this reaction uh, again um, was maybe kind of thought about, or that he they might have known that they could have reacted. Uh, again, allergic to um, allergic to a food product. So uh, again, that's important to understand how we get these allergic reactions. That was only one in our community so far. It's it's important for you to understand too. Uh, so be knowledgeable, do your research uh, about what could actually maybe give you a reaction that you're going to want to make sure you talk to your doctor about before you actually get the vaccine. But again, out of the, the thousands of, of doses that have been given so far, um, uh, that, that one reaction, um, I, again, it's, it, we'd rather have zero, but I, again, we're not, having, we're not seeing more right now. Uh, I will tell you too, uh, anecdotally, and and in um, from what I'm hearing across the community who have gotten vaccinated, uh, some you know some soreness in the arm, uh, but nothing like a tetanus shot. Uh, the uh, the idea here then too is there might be some redness, um, but again those are to be expected. And some are actually I'm sorry, let me take a, a step back. Some are actually saying that you know they they felt a little fatigued the next day or two days after they had a headache, but it went away. Uh, again, we'll get more into this, you know, as we go down the, the, the next weeks or so, but that's your body actually saying, hey, listen, I'm seeing something that's out of the ordinary and we need to fight that. We, we need to begin to build that immunity to it. And that's what your body's doing. So, but more to come on that. But again, I, I'm, I'm really happy to say in our community, we're not seeing anything of significance for, um, for adverse reactions. So that is a good thing. I, at this point in time, I, I think Shannon, uh, do we want to go ahead and maybe take some questions? I, I don't think I, I missed anything. If I did, Shannon, please let me know. No, Eric, you did not. And, okay, thank um, you. Members of the media, if you do have a question, please go ahead and raise your hand and I will call on you. And at that point, you can unmute and ask your question. Amy? Hi, um, a, couple, a couple things. Um, we've seen a lot of, um, you know, different things communities are doing when it comes to police officers. Um, we know what happened down in Erie County uh, just yesterday. And I'm wondering with that 1B group, I didn't see them included on that. Um, where are they, where does that stand right now? Are they now in the first group? Are they kind of in between? Um, what, what's the status of that? Um, at, at this point in time, uh, law enforcement is are, are not in that 1B group. Uh, I know that there are a number of organizations, agencies talking with Columbus uh, to, to figure out exactly how and where law enforcement does fit. Um, again, I, I think across the state, what we're trying to do is, is follow the directive of the governor uh, and ODH and, and vaccinate those tier one individuals. 
Um, but again, um, you know, as soon as a group is allowed to get vaccinated, we want to make sure that we push to get them into one of our clinics and then make sure that that vaccination does get to them as quick as possible. Because remember, uh, again, this is, this is something that we will talk about more in depth, but once you get your vaccination for these two, uh, for these two um, vaccines, it takes about 14 days to get 50%, if you would, immunity, effectiveness of that vaccine. You get your second dose, 21 for Pfizer, 28 for, 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 for Medina, uh, after that first vaccination, then it takes another two weeks to get full immunity, which is 94, 95% effectiveness. So it's really important um, to get these groups online quickly. And it goes back to whether it's law enforcement or 65 and older or K through 12. It's really important that, uh, again, we're, we expedite vaccines uh, as much as possible. Um, I, I guess following up to that, has the Lucas County Health Department done anything, expressed anything to um, the state, you know, about what to do with police officers, about including them in on that first group? Uh, you know, Amy, I'll be very transparent. Yes. Uh, actually, Christmas Eve, I was, um, I was in conversation with, with local elected officials, uh, as well as the governor's office uh, to, uh, again, um, state the case of why uh, law enforcement should be vaccinated now. Uh, that, include, that includes correctional uh, officers. Um, I will tell you this, we have weekly meetings with uh, both the governor and ODH multiple times actually in, in different, uh, uh, different uh, aspects. And each one of those calls, uh, one of the health commissioners and or one of those individuals leaders on that call have voiced their concern and opinion about law enforcement. So it continues to be a topic. Okay, and then my last question with this survey you guys are putting out, is this just for people to fill out when it does for when the vaccine is available for them and when they, you know, do follow in that group um, and then, you know, you guys will follow up. So what we'd really like to do um, is we really like to get all our planning done now. So the, the more individuals who will actually do that pre-registration for us and then categorize themselves accordingly. Um, that, that allows us then to say, okay, so we know, I'm just going to use 1B, for example. So we know that K through 12, I'm going to throw a number out. There's 10,000 individuals K through 12. Uh, we know that 7,000 have said they want to be vaccinated. So we can start planning that. Uh, so that goes with each of the groups, though. Uh, you see uh, on their uh, retail, uh, retail um, workers. Uh, that's going to be another group eventually. So I, I think what we're trying to do is catch as many of those possible categories in future tiers or phases so that we can we can get a good idea uh, of plan. Now, it doesn't mean that, you know, you're locked into anything. So if you want the vaccine now, but say maybe, you know, a month from now you don't want it, just because you're registered doesn't mean that you're locked into that and vice versa. Just because right now, you know, you're a little, maybe a little skeptical um, of the vaccine, which again, I, I would urge you not to be. Uh, but a month from now, you want to get the vaccine. We're going to have that registration up for uh, for the foreseeable future. Great, thank you. Sure. I can't figure out how to raise my hand. Can you guys hear me? It's Bree. Yeah, I, I gotcha. Awesome, thank you. Um, sure. My Zoom is being very weird right now. I don't know why. Um, I was just wondering, so are you trying to also use this as a way to kind of survey the community? I know you said you want to get to that 70% herd immunity. So is this also kind of going to act in the way of surveying the community and seeing how many people actually do think that they want to get that vaccine, even if they're all the way down in that, you know, wide open general um, groups like three, four? You know, Brie, I, I think you make a real good point that, yeah, um, th that will be uh, some of the data we want to capture. Um, you know, it'd be nice to know right now, hey, you know, 80% of our population wants it. Great. Um, and that, that allows us to plan. I, I think there's a, uh, there's a couple things. I, I think what I want to do too is make the community comfortable um, so they know that, uh, again, at least um, they're, they're, in, they're in a group, all right? We know they're in this group. They're going to get some sort of information from us. Maybe it's just even a paragraph every week that says, this is where we're at, you know, hang on, so that they're made comfortable. Um, and, and I think, you know, the, 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 the big thing with all this is communication. Um, you know, it's, it's a trying time for everybody. Uh, I think this is a great thing that we have the vaccination in, in community. Uh, I wish we were able to have, you know, 100,000 doses tomorrow, but that's not going to happen. So we have to, we have to be uh, precise in, in how we get our vaccine out, make sure that we're covering those groups that, uh, again, are, are 
are disproportionately af uh, affected by COVID. Um, and, and so that, you know, that's 65 and older. And, you know, there, there's other groups out there that I know that we're going to have to be looking at after this next 1D phase uh, that are desperately in need of it as well. So, uh, but again, um, unfortunately, there's not enough of doses right now for I, who I know want to be even vaccinated. Uh, so we're going to have to just work inside the system and get push that vaccine out as quick as we can. And again, you're going to see in the coming weeks partners that we're going to um, to make sure that we're aligned with in the community, which is what this community needs to get that vaccine out as fast as we can um, and as effectively as we can. A quick follow up, if you don't mind. Sorry, no, I can't recall that you uh, raised your hand there. Um, so, are you saying that in addition to these weekly kind of updates, that if people pre register, they'll get that correspondence, whether it's to their email or, like you said, yeah. down the road, a text message to get a better idea of when it will be getting to them? Sure. Yeah, most definitely, Brie. Uh, and then also, then too, um, you know, as we, as we get, as everybody in the community in the state gets better at, you know, um, registering and using software because there's a lot of behind the scenes things that we're doing uh, with paperwork and you know reporting and things of that nature so we're going to be able to tell them exactly what they need to do and how they need to do it um, so that again when they're ready to get their vaccine all they got to do is you know follow the instructions simplistic instructions get get registered we get you to whatever site it is and you know you get your vaccination great thank you so much sure Hi, it's Melissa Vage from 13 ABC. A um, couple questions here. Hi, um, let's talk about the flow of the vaccine into the community. You, so you've got the original 2,700, then yes. it looks like you got an additional 1,500. How Have you been given, given any indication from the state how fast we will start to get this vaccine into our community or are we just in a watch and wait? Well, um, Mel, unfortunately, I think we're in a, a watch and wait. Um, you know, we were pretty excited. I was excited when we got 2,700 the first week. I'm thinking, yeah, you know, we can only go up from here. Uh, and then you saw that we dropped down eight and then 700. So that that was a little discouraging from my standpoint because I, I know how fast we can get it into arms. If we have arms and we've got the vaccine, you know, again, we can make this flow really quick. But the problem is that barrier that, you know, that, that, that bottleneck right now is the vaccine and knowing exactly how many we're going to get. We probably won't know for next week doses until Thursday uh, of what we can plan. And again, we already have kind of clinics lined up. And if we don't get doses in, we're going to be about 100, I think 100 doses short, I heard last night. Again, counts are always, are always changing, but we're going to be a little short next week. And we're anticipating we will get additional doses next week, but again, we don't know how many. Okay. Um, another thing that, you know, I'm, a lot of people over 65, the senior citizens are wondering how fast they were, they're obviously in group 1B. So we have 10,000 people to get through before we can get to our senior citizens. And if so, is there any way to indicate to them when they're likely to be in line for their vaccines? Um, Mel, that that's a that's a great question. Uh, again, um, we're we're following uh, ODHs and and governor's directives, and what that means is that they have not really decided how this is going to be split up. Uh, we're we're anticipating. Let's just look at schools and 65 and older. Um, the the number that is being thrown about again, we can't be totally accurate on this, and that's why this pre-registration is so important. About a hundred thousand. Uh, are we going to get 100? So let's say we open up 65 and older, you know, April 1st. I, I don't, I'm just throwing out a date. Am I, are we going to have 100,000 doses to be able to actually do them? Um, so I, again, there's a lot of moving parts here. You know, there's this possibility too, yeah, 65 and older will be opened up, but, you know, is there, is there a way that then that gets kind of skinned? You know, is it 65 and older to 75, 75 and 80? I mean, again, how does that all work? Again, that's that's being discussed down in Columbus, and, and we're hoping to hear something soon from the governor and ODH. Okay, and okay. just one quick follow up to the sure. whole um, Erie County thing with the police, because mm -hmm. a lot of people are asking about that. So you know, it's not like, say, Lucas County decided. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's my dog. That's okay. S say Lucas County decided to give the shots. Um, is there any way that um, you would get sanctioned by the state? Um, again, that's a good question, and um, 
something that I've, I've posed to other health commissioners and, and, and to ODH and, and never really have gotten a, a good answer. Um, I think the sanction comes from this. Um, do I want to do law enforcement? Yes. Does, you know, does, does every health commissioner, I think, or pretty much every health commissioner want to do law enforcement? Yes. But there, there's, there's, unfortunately, there's this decision to make. Um, is, is that 28-year-old law enforcement vaccinated individual, um, d- does, that, does that play well or does that, does that not allow that 75-year-old to go ahead and get vaccinated because we don't have that vaccine right now. I mean, that that's the example that the governor has given. Um, so uh, again, I'm, we're just gonna follow what the directive is from the governor. Uh, I don't wanna have any sanctions against the community. Um, and, and I think, um, I would think that most of my health commissioners are, are doing the same thing. They're following that guidance. Okay, thank you. My turn. I lost. I lost. Oh, I'm sorry. There you are, Eric. I'm back. Um, Eric, yes. so this is Caitlin with the blade. So I was doing some quick math on the numbers you were giving on doses, and from the chart you shared, it looked like about 4,200 doses had been delivered to the area, and through January 9th, you had plans to distribute about. 3,000 of them, but that still leaves another, you know, 1,200 doses that are unaccounted for. Are those spoken for somewhere? So uh, the, 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 some of those doses have went out to like the, uh, the psychiatric hospital. Uh, there, there are other doses that are going to be given out um, next week. Uh, there's, uh, there's some doses that are, are sitting there for first responders. So um, when we're, like I said, when it's all said and done, if we don't have doses delivered next week, which I th- which we will, um, we're going to be um, we're going to be short about a hundred from what we have right now. And when you say short, you mean short for the second round? No, 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 no. I'm I'm not even worried about the second round because I know we're going to have doses. Whatever uh, that. Let me let me take a step back here. That's a really good point for the community. We are, as you saw, um, maybe that there was some discussion about only giving one dose. We're not doing that here um, at this point in time. Uh, We are going to get that second dose. Whoever gets that first dose, your second dose is sitting down in Columbus right now uh, or sitting or or sitting in the in some warehouse right now. And that will be delivered to us for your second dose. So don't worry about the second dose. What I'm talking about is our first dose. So, again, here's the here's the issue that we have. We want to plan to get as many people, again, doing 10,000 individuals, we want to get as many people vaccinated as possible as quick as we can, but we can't because we don't know how many doses we're getting even for next week until Thursday. So our planning has to be ahead because we don't want to say, oh, hey, by the way, you know, we're going to have another thousand doses next week uh, on Friday. Why don't you sign up? I, I mean, that 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 is hard to do. We're probably going to have to eventually do that the way it's, it's working. But we want to we want to try to get as many people scheduled ahead of time, with with the understanding that you know we're we're going to get some doses in, so we're going to have to hope that we can at least get another hundred doses in to be able to cover everybody. Um, but I do expect us to get at least I would think at least the seven hundred that we've gotten this week, and then that that means that we can do another seven hundred uh, or another six hundred uh, with that hundred uh, with that hundred doses that were short. Uh, another 600 doses out. Hopefully that made sense. I, you know, it gets, there's so many moving parts, ladies and gents, that uh, again, um, we, I, I have staff members trying to, again, take the puzzle and, and make it all work. And at times um, it is like herding cats with all this. Um, the, the question is, when will the general public have access to the vaccination? Uh, so we're talking about that phase three and four. Um, I, again, I, I would love to be able to give you a definitive date, um, but let, let's, let's try June-ish. Uh, again, it all depends on the amount of vaccine uh, that is rolled out. We heard, I heard yesterday too, uh, Moderna is going to increase um, doses, I think, by, was it 100 million, if I'm not mistaken? Again, forgive me on that stat. But Moderna is looking at increasing the amount of, of doses 
that are for the United States. Pfizer already has. Uh, they said that they're going to give uh, an additional uh, 100 million doses uh, before the end of July. So we, we know at some point in time, we're going to have more vaccine than what we know what to do with. Unfortunately, right now, <laughs> we, we don't have enough of vaccine to, to get in everybody's arms um, at this point in time. Uh, another question, I think, on the chat. Um, you know, there's a lot of questions too uh, about where do I fall into which tier? Um, again, if we had enough of doses for everybody, uh, th this job would be very easy. Uh, we could do it very fast. Uh, just a, a side note, um, there was a smallpox outbreak in, in New York in the 40s. They had to do uh, 600 uh, inoculations for smallpox in their people. They did it within 30 days. So if we're still looking at, you know, um, if we could get 400,000 doses of vaccine and we could easily do that, but we're not gonna get that. We're not gonna get that in one full swoop. Um, so where do you fall in? And that again is really dictated by Columbus and the doses they think they will get and then who has the most um, risk to getting COVID and passing and possibly having significant issues with um, with the out with their outcome. Um, so, like a hairdresser, you know, I I you think about it, you know, a hairdresser spends you know a goodly amount of time. Well, not on me. Um, I'm pretty quick, unfortunately. Uh, but for the most part, you know, uh, again, you know, they're they're in front of somebody for 15 minutes uh, in close proximity. So uh, again, th that would be uh, that would be a, a occupation that is is relatively, I think, high risk. But again, it, it goes back to the amount of doses, and then really who is most as at risk at that point in time. So I would love to say that a hairdresser, you know, is going to be in one B one, one B two, one B three, but we we don't know. Uh, so again, that's why it's so important for this communication every week to happen for you to sign up for pre-registration. So you get our little, I'll call it a newsletter. So you kind of know what's going on every week. Eric, I'm gonna go ahead and share the screen of the health department's website. Oh, so please you do, thank you. Yes. Through on how to access the 1B form. Okay. So uh, again, you, you go to our um, to our web page, our website, and you click on the uh, coronavirus block in the middle, and it's going to take you here. Go ahead, Shannon. And then you come down. Hey, Shannon, there 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 is some confusion on this. I, I know this is for one B right now. Um, so I, I want to make sure that everybody understands that, I, again, this is pre-registration. Let's get you in there. Um, let's go ahead and um, make sure that you you are pre-registered and that, um, again, we're, we are looking at 65 and older at this point in time. So that's why it says the 1B, phase 1B. <clears throat> So you, you'll, you'll, you'll probably see the website changing periodically, little, you know, little tweaks um, as, as we find out from you as a community that maybe something's confusing, that doesn't make sense, um, you know, can, can you add something? So you, you'll see little tweaks here and there. So don't be too concerned if you go uh, to the webpage one day and, and something might be a little bit different than the next. Again, um, this is going to be a, a website uh, and a plan in motion uh, much like that 1B vaccination, because uh, that's what we care about right now, but we're going to care about everybody in the community eventually. So that's, again, that's why it's so important for us to get that pre-registration up and running. Um, are there any more questions, concerns? Okay. Um, I do believe we're going to try to make this a, a standing um, press conference. Uh, I, again, we'll be adding... Um, uh, the minutia into it uh, into additional press conferences. We'll try to get in the weeds a little bit more, not take so much of a thirty thousand foot view, so that hopefully we'll be able to answer some of your questions um, a, a little bit more in depth. So, Shannon, I, I think that's all I have. I think we are all set. So, thank you so much for your time today.
this will be uploaded to the TLCHD Facebook page and then also the YouTube channel as well for those who would like to view it at a later time. Thank you for your time today.